I'm going to thank the organizers, and uh, I'm going to tell you about uh, hippo signaling in, uh, in heart regeneration. Uh, th that's my uh, disclosure. Uh, so we are interested in uh, the hippo pathway, uh, primarily because the hippo pathway is uh, an endo endogenous pathway, uh, which inhibits cardiomyocyte renewal. Is, can you put the time? Is there a timer up there? Oh, you didn't? Okay, sure. Okay, so the hippo pathway is a, uh, a kinase cascade, um, originally described in flies. Uh, these are the core components, the hippo kinases, the warts kinases. Um, essentially what the pathway does is it senses extracellular signals, physiologic signals coming from outside the cell, <clears throat> turns, on the, uh, turns on those kinases, and uh, there's a, down, a very important downstream molecule which is phosphorylated by the kinases called Yorkian flies. Uh, when the pathway is on, Yorkie is uh, phosphorylated, excluded from the nucleus, and uh, transcriptionally inactivated. When the, uh, when the pathway is low, uh, the Yorkian can, can move into the nucleus, interact with transcription factors, uh, and activate uh, uh, genes which promote cell division is a simple way to think about it. The pathway is conserved in mammals. Uh, the genes are, have slightly different names. I'm going to be talking about YAP, but uh, the same mechanism, phosphorylation excluded, uh, not phosphorylated, moves into the nucleus and drives transcription of uh, cell proliferation genes. Uh, and the other molecule I'm going to be talking about is WW45, but I'll be referring to it as uh, Salvador. So, you know, conceptually, um, or the first study that we did rather uh, in development a number of years ago now was to take away the HIPPO pathway in developing cardiomyocytes. And <clears throat> just like in flies, if you inactivate the HIPPO pathway in a developing heart, in developing cardiomyocytes, you get, uh, you get big hearts. So it's an organ size control pathway. It's about two, two and a half fold larger um, uh, than a control heart. Uh, so organ size control pathway can serve from flies uh, into mammals. Conceptually, the simple way to think about it is the hippo pathway is a stop signal. This is the way I like to think about it. There are physiologic inputs into a, a cell, for example, in a cell in a high density environment, turns on the stop signal, turns on the hippo pathway, and that is a, a very strong signal to the cell to stop proliferating. Much of what we've been doing over the years is, be, is remove co components of the hippo pathway, so take away the components of the stop signal and, and, and try to understand what it does uh, in different uh, contexts in the, in the mammalian heart. One of the experiments we, uh, we published back in 2017 was to look at the, the, the stop uh, pathway, the HIPPO pathway, in the context of heart failure. And what we did was a, a, an experiment where we infarcted mice at, at time zero. We waited three weeks, uh, let the mice go into heart failure, uh, tested for different signs of heart failure, and then we inactivated uh, using Cree transgenics at that three-week time point and uh, <clears throat> to take away the hippo pathway, remove the stop signal and the cardiomyocytes, uh, and then follow the mice out for a period of six more weeks. And you could see in that context that you can actually see reversal of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the heart failure. We see uh, you know, drastic improvement of, uh, of uh, ejection fraction up to the unoperated uh, sham controls. Uh, right, so here's... Here's the images of that experiment. Uh, he, these are the controls at that, that terminal nine-week time point. And if you inactive, inactivate Salvador, take away this component of the stop signal, that you can see that the, the, there's a lot of muscularization of that free wall of left ventricle. Likewise, the fibroblasts or the fibrosis is quite different. And also what I'm not showing you is that there are a lot more endothelial cells. So there are multiple things happening. It's not just proliferation, but there are also these non-autonomous effects on the local microenvironment uh, that I'm going to be talking to you about a little bit more. Uh, one of the things that we've been interested in, 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 in doing, is, of course, is translating this in, to try to help uh, uh, patients who have uh, heart failure. So what we, just briefly, we published this in, in 2021, but we used an AAV9 uh, approach with a, uh, the troponin T uh, promoter, RNA interference against Salvador, against knock down the stop signal. And our, what we're doing here is we are uh, delivering the virus uh, right into the heart. Uh, as, as Tim just mentioned, we also use the NOGA myostar catheter uh, system to, to map the uh, subendocardially uh, inside the heart. Uh, and ben, this, is a, this is a little diagram that I, I took from uh, Bill's uh, very nice review. Um, so what we, uh, 
what we are uh, proposing is that you, by inactivating uh, HIPPO uh, or taking away the stop signal in border zone cardiomyocytes, post ischemia reperfusion injury, that you can see uh, these different uh, aspects of tissue renewal and heart regeneration. We see dedifferentiation of the cardiomyocytes. We can see cell cycle entry, cell division, and then through mechanisms which are uh, not well understood, there's a redifferentiation. Okay. And then to show you, we just did a subendocardial approach using the PIG system. And uh, this was done with my uh, colleagues at Texas Heart, Emerson Perrin, the late Jim Willerson, and uh, my colleague also, uh, Keeley. This is the, just quickly, the, uh, the salve knockdown in the PIG. Uh, we infarcted the PIG using a 90-minute ischemia uh, 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 reperfusion uh, protocol. We waited two weeks. At this time point, we, uh, we did the mapping and then injected the virus. And then we followed the pigs out for a, a total of, uh, of, uh, of three, three months. And uh, the bottom line here is that we did see improvement. If you look at it with just total ejection fraction, here's the infarct, two weeks. And then if you, uh, the controls continue to drop their ejection fraction, but the Salvador knockdown where we've, uh, we're knocking down the hippo pathway, the stop signal, you can see that they start to improve their ejection fraction. Likewise, if you look at it in a slightly different way, uh, with change in ejection fraction, at the two-week time point, controls drop. These are two different doses, uh, and the higher dose, there was a trend. We weren't powered, really, to, to see a statistical difference between these two doses of the, of the Salvador knockdown uh, vector. But anyway, this is uh, um, evidence that you can, uh, by knocking down the stop signal in cardiomyocytes, you can um, see improvement uh, in a large animal model. And then this, we're, so we're moving forward with this, trying to uh, translate this further. One of the other models that we use in the lab is, uh, is, is a version of YAP, which is uh, impervious to the negative regulation of the HIPPO pathway. So it's YAP that cannot see, uh, uh, not sense any of the stop signal. And it's called YAP5SA. And the rest of that slide is really not that uh, important. But basically what we're, where we are in the pathway right now is we have a version of YAP that cannot sense, sense any of this negative regulation, moves into the nucleus and it drives almost constitutively, not quite, but almost constitutively drives transcription, which can make cardiomyocytes uh, uh, divide. How do we know that it divides? We, uh, we did a lot of experiments in this paper we published in 2019, but the, I think the best uh, evidence is if you do stereology. Uh, about a week after we in induced the YAP5SA in adult cardiomyocytes, we see about 700,000 more uh, cardiomyocytes. And we have done uh, a number of experiments to, uh, to support this uh, further. So this question, we, we wanted to use this, uh, this model because it's a very strong model. It allows us to see things that are, uh, are difficult to see. Uh, and so uh, we were in interested in this question of the microenvironment. And so we've been using spatial transcriptomics. Our approach is to uh, combine single cell or single nuclear RNA-seq with the spatial transcriptomics, the, the, the spatial, uh, which I'm going to be talking, I'll, I'll call ST. ST provides quite a bit of important information. You can see spatially variable gene expression. Uh, for example, uh, across a genotype, uh, in two different genotypes, a control and then a YAP5SA, for example. You can see across regions in the heart, here's a gene which is expressed in atria. Uh, one, which is ventricular, and then this is uh, BMP10 in the right atrium. And likewise, you can get very important information from the single nuclear RNA-seq. Uh, these are typical UMAPs. But it's very important for uh, deconvoluting the ST data because these, what we're using here is the, uh, the Visium uh, 10x platform, and these are actually in spots. So you get about seven to 10 cells per spot. And using the uh, single cell, uh, you, can, you can actually uh, deconvolute pretty well what's in each spot, so card, different types of cardiomyocytes, macrophages, and, and fibroblasts. The other important information we get out of these ST experiments uh, is cell-cell interaction and, and intracellular communication data. So we can see uh, very, uh, cl pretty clearly, uh, uh, you know, the signaling interactions between different types of fibroblasts, macrophages, cardiomyocytes, and I'll tell you a little bit about that right now. Uh, what we found uh, initially, actually what we found was there was a, su a surprise right up at the beginning of, the, of this whole set of experiments. Um, we, f we found uh, two different types of cardiomyocytes, which in its itself is maybe not surprising, but if you focus down here at the AP5SA heart, we have a, a, 
uh, a cell state, a cardiomyocyte cell state or subpopulation, which we refer to as CM2. And what the, the characteristics of this are, uh, are cardiomyocytes that have evidence for sarcomere disassembly, changes in metabolism. And this is all very consistent with what we had published previously uh, in that YAP5 assay drives back this, uh, the, uh, the phenotype of cardiomyocytes back to a more fetal state. Uh, what we, if you look in the control, most of the cardiomyocytes in the control were uh, what we're call, I'm going to call CM1. And these are your typical adult cardiomyocyte phenotype. But, you know, sort of unexpectedly, we found that there were uh, these CM2s very clearly uh, uh, also in the control. Uh, and they were, they were uh, in RV and also in subendocardial uh, regions of the heart. Uh, right. So that was number one surprise. The other thing we, we noticed was that there was, there was actually a fairly significant influx of macrophages into these YAP5SA hearts that we did not see in the control. Okay, so uh, the other thing we, we found uh, when we went back and looked at these uh, CM2 localized spots, so you can, you can actually go in and look very in, in detail and in depth about those spots which are contained in the CM2 cardiomyocytes. What we found was that there were, there were uh, many cells that were expressed in different components of the complement pathway. And I just want to focus on two of those right now. This C3, which was one of the main components of complement, uh, was expressed uh, in, uh, in the CM2 spots. And you can see also throughout YAP5SA, because YAP5SA, again, is almost all CM2. The other thing we saw was C3AR1. <clears throat> so C3AR1, not so much in the control, but we did see it uh, in the YAP5SA. The cells expressing, expressing those genes, because we can deconvolve de the spots, uh, C3 was actually being expressed by the cardiac fibroblasts uh, in YAP5SA, and C3AR1 was uh, being expressed by macrophages in the YAP5SA heart. So, so we're seeing evidence that within the CM2 spots, if there are th three cell types which are co-localized, uh, the, the, uh, the CM2s, the C3 expressing cardiac fibroblasts, and then these macrophages which are expressing this uh, complement receptor C3AR1. Another way to look at this data is to do a very sort of rigorous co-localization analysis. And if you do that, you, well, what we found is the CM2 and these C3CFs uh, were, were highly co-localized uh, in, the, in the CM2 spots. Certainly in YAP5SA, you can see that, but also in the control. So we did see evidence that CM2 and C3 were actually co-localized in the control. But if you look for the, uh, the three cell types, which uh, uh, I'll call the cell triad, so the cardiomyocytes and the fibroblasts and the macrophages. Never saw that in the control, but we did see it in the AB5SA. Uh, and here's, these are some violent plots uh, quantifying that. So this suggested to us that perhaps these macrophages were an important ingredient for making the, the, the AB5SA cardiomyocytes more uh, renewable and proliferative. So we went back then, the YAP5SA is, is artificial, and we, uh, you know, we wanted to look at uh, maybe a context which was a little bit more, uh, uh, less artificial. So we went and looked at available ST data from the Olson lab, and which, what they were doing was looking at neonatal hearts in which they had uh, performed uh, MI. So we looked at, at their P1 MI hearts three days after the MI, and we looked for CM2. We see CM2 in the peri-infarct region right here, these dark spots. Likewise, C3 uh, expressing cardiac fibroblasts were there. And then these C3 AR1 macrophages uh, were likewise there. You notice that at the, seven days after the MI that there's, the cell states are still there, but they are starting to uh, not be quite as, uh, as obvious. Um, we also looked, since we think that this is YAP driven, we, we have, uh, we've developed a YAP, uh, we know YAP target genes, so we have a YAP target score. So we, uh, you know, we scored all the cells in those spots, uh, and we could see that uh, uh, YAP, the YAP target uh, uh, spots, uh, the YAP, high YAP activity spots were also co-localized in that peri-infarct region in a similar pattern, uh, and also it kind of, uh, it, it drifted away a little bit at D7. Then if you go back and look at these co-localization uh, analyses, uh, CM1 with these other cell types, you never see any co-localization. CM1, again, is that more adult type cardiomyocyte, but CM2, you can see at that P1 uh, infarct three days later, there's, there's quite strong correlation between the three cell types with the, the triad really easily shows, uh, is very obvious. And then also, if you look at the uh, YAP activity in those spots, uh, in the CM2 uh, spots, uh, you can see that it, 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 it's also very obvious and it also kind of drifts, drifts off at that day seven. Functional data, so we, uh, we have, 
uh, there is a C3, since we think macrophages are kind of like the key component, a key component here, we looked at C3AR1 uh, loss of function mice uh, in a YAP5SA background. And, and uh, we know that YAP5SA drives cardiomyocytes into, uh, into S phase, uh, which takes a long time. It takes about 72 hours for them to get through S phase and then relatively quick, quickly through G2 and, and then into M. Um, and if you look at the, at the right hand, these two right hand panels, um, you can see that the AAV uh, YAP5SA uh, hearts had uh, a lot of CDK1 positive cardiomyocytes, it's about 5%. And then also they have quite a few uh, uh, PHH3 uh, cardiomyocytes, um, almost you know, a lot, 40%. Uh, in contrast, if you look at these C3AR1 uh, mutants, that you know, there won't, won't be any signaling through that receptor. Uh, we see a lot less uh, uh, evidence for, uh, for cell cycle progression. We also see some other evidence that in the, if, you, if you don't have that, uh, those C3AR1 expressing macrophages that uh, sarcomeres are, uh, are not uh, disassembled as much as uh, in the AP5SA cardiomyocytes. So what do we think is happening here? So we think uh, in the adult AP5SA, we see the assembly of the cellular triad. Uh, that's a cardiomyocyte, which is in a certain cell state, which makes it uh, more proliferative. But also we see the C3 uh, cardiac fiber expressing cardiac fibroblasts and these C3AR1 expressing macrophages. We also see that in this uh, endogenous P1 injury. Uh, uh, yeah, so we think that the, we have evidence that these proliferating uh, CM2 cardiomyocytes actually are expressing CSF1. Almost all those, CSF1 actually is a, YAP, a direct YAP target. CS, uh, these C3AR1 macrophages are almost all CSF1 R positive uh, macrophages. Uh, in addition, we think that th this uh, signal coming from the fibroblast C3A uh, is also important for a cell state change in these macrophages. It somehow, somehow uh, makes them, uh, uh, you know, become more of a uh, reparative macrophage. Essentially, we also have some evidence that these macrophages are signaling back to the macro uh, to the uh, to the myocytes. Uh, in a beneficial way that allows them uh, also to proliferate and survive proliferation in some cases. Yeah, we did some other experiments as well, but I, okay, so yeah, I'll just, this, this is the team. I, something like this takes, definitely takes a team. I have a terrific collaborator. Uh, uh, Hassan Sami is a machine learning person, uh, computational person, at, uh, Shao Li likewise. Uh, expert in ST. Uh, Francisco is a machine learning person as well. And then the, uh, Yuka and Fanson, uh, Bing and uh, Zhang and Shiji are, are my, my wet lab group uh, looking at all this. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Okay, thanks.